a God all by yourself. We will praise you from, from everlasting, everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. We will praise you from, from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. We will praise you from everlasting. Everlasting to everlasting, we will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I shall see the praise and worship you continue. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Uh, tomorrow there is going to be more praise and worship. In the miracle and service section, make sure you don't miss it. And your blessings will be permanent in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, please, if you are uh, just coming, God bless you. Please, you can come closer to the front side uh, where you see everything. God bless you. Please, we can be seated. So, because of our time, we are going straight to the next session. And if you look at your program, the next session is um, by. Uh, it's going to be taken by a brother and a pastor, a father and a mentor that I've come to know since we started uh, this program in the UK. Or one of the early people that I, I admired a lot when I first met him. Someone that when you stay with him, you are very much encouraged. And he's very vast in mission. And he's the full statute director for missions and for member care among 36 tribes in many other countries. Um, and by the grace of God, is, he has particular interests in ethnics and leadership principles. And God has used him to build relationships across missionaries and churches. Uh, today, I'm happy to introduce him. And not only that, he came for the first time since I knew him. In the last four years, he came with his wife this time. Praise the Lord. Please, let's give him a round of applause. Please, mommy, can you wave your hand? Let them see you. Praise the Lord. Uh, the wife is a very, very quiet, but she's a mother in Israel. <laughs> uh, and she's a professor. A serving professor in the University of Ibadan, Nigeria. Let's give Jesus a round of applause. Okay, with Jesus, welcome. I want us to welcome Dadio Lushola Moses. Um, I'll be taking the message on spiritual warfare. It's a multi-dimensional sin war issue. Um, if you just flip your Bible with me to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. And I read from verse 1 to 3. As for you, you are dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live. When you follow the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the year, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient, all of us also live among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our sinful natures and following its desires and thoughts, like the rest who are by nature objects of wrath. Father, we just look up unto you because of your word that give life. Pray that, Lord, that this will come on top of all the blessings you have put upon our lives since this meeting starts. And you will help to reach out to the depths of our life to destroy in totality the root cause of sin in the name of Jesus. That may fully live for you uh, in the way and the manner you expect us, and so we may well represent you. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. A louder amen. A greater amen. 
Yeah, we have said all those um, beautiful things like being in Christ, our authority as a believer, just like uh, our brother Tyron has helped us, and it was glorious, it was marvelous. But like he said, there is the God responsibility. There is the man responsibility. Uh, there are certain things that God expects of us because he gave us an illustration by bringing our hands together that we are united with Christ. He told us about that glorious thing, Christ in us, the hope of what? Of his glory. So when Christ is in us, there is no power. There is no gang up that can defeat us. The only way that he could reach unto us, it was just like in the book of Numbers, there is no curse against the Israel. You know, when uh, Balak, Ayab, Balaam, to bless, I mean, to curse Israel, there's no way he could curse them. And so the only way is to subtly tell them that all you need to do is introduce your beautiful woman to them. The moment they go into iniquity, yeah, the devil will have his way in their life. And uh, we know all that what happened. And it's the same system until today that the devil used. But it's a spiritual warfare. We can't take it lightly. And that's why we are talking about this uh, this evening. And that was Paul writing to the Ephesians Christian, as for you, you are dead in your transgression and sins in which you used to live when you followed the way of this world and of the rule of the kingdom of the air. And all of us, we are born naturally. Every man has the propensity to sin. It's in our nature. And Esau is always the elder brother of Jacob. <laughs> do, do, do we understand? I know. I mean, so when we get converted, we have an elder brother. That's sinful nature. But thank God for what Christ did on the cross of Calvary. Part of the package is he died and destroyed the root cause of sin in our life. That's why he suffered all the pains, all the dehumanizing effects, all the agonizing effects as the book of Isaiah informed us. That for our sin, he was bruised. So when Christ comes into our life, the first thing he does is, he go, he does, is to destroy the root cause of sin in our life. But he has done that, but we are to take the spiritual warfare. And not us alone, but as we have been told, we are now made his ambassador to represent him. He has committed into our hand the ministry of reconciliation, both to will reconciling men back unto God. That whose sin we remit, stand remitted. Whose sin we forgive, stand what? So he gives us the authority in our locality, in our family, in, we, in our place of war, to destroy the root cause of sin, to destroy the root power of sin. Because if all that has been said by Tyron and the other people that are minister in the morning and yesterday said has done on us, we will go out ready to raku the devil to submission. We will go out to destroy the root cause of sin, to destroy the root power of sin. And we have noticed that in the course of this mission work, that there are missionaries who are taking this message of the cross to some unrich people group and they have preached Christ unto them and some of the local people accepted Christ but years after you go back you discover that they have gone back into their sin and so we should improve we should realize that God has given us that if we are invading any territory, that it is to destroy the root cause of sin in that territory, 
in that locality so that they could enjoy what we call the redemptive lift. Because it amazes one that some believers, years after, they said they have accepted Christ, you can't see the result of Christ in their life. Something went wrong somewhere. And so this evening is what we will be addressing. And we are trusting that we come out emboldened, equipped, and skilled by the, his divine nature in order to win that spiritual warfare consistently and constantly in the name of Jesus. That wherever we go preaching the name of Christ Jesus, the people come out, deliver, set free, made to live for Christ, never overcome by sin again. Because if you follow me in that Ephesian, he said, in which you used to live, when you follow the ways of this world, there is a natural way that the people of the world follow. It's introduced unto us from the birth. He said, and of the ruler of the kingdom of the here. So when we're talking about sin, we are not talking about struggling when Christ has come into your life, because he talks, he said, there is a ruler of the kingdom of the here. And like we are told, it's a battle of the kingdom. So it's not about you. But thank God for the king that we have in our own kingdom, who is Jesus Christ, who dealt with the root cause of sin that it could no longer have effect in our life. Because if he has given us that power and that authority, that whose sin you remit, stand remitted. Whose sin you forgive, stand forgiving. You can't give what you don't have. You can't give what you don't have. We were told that you have been given the legal authority. So that means the legal authority to remit somebody's sin has been given unto you. That means the root cause of sin is destroyed in your life. But until we meet Jesus face to face, it's a battle. That's why you read from the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, the picture that it consistently gives is a battle. It's a battle. It's a battle. David, a man after the Lord's um, after the Lord's heart is a man that fought so much battle that God even have to tell him that you have so much blood in your hand you can't build me a temple and the Solomon his son that God gave rest you could know what he did he just went about marrying that's I mean <laughs> do you understand? so when you don't fight battle there's a tendency to slip back into sinful life. So that's why we are talking about spiritual warfare. So all the beautiful things still to appropriate and to gain victory, you need to fight. You can't run away from it. Like somebody once asked me in the church, I said, this one you teach us, why we do we have to fight every time? I said, bro, you have to fight. <laughs> it's all about fight. For Israel to occupy the promised land, God didn't just lead them and say, just enter there. They fought. They fought to occupy the promised land. And if you see all through, it's fighting. It's fighting. Ephesians chapter 6. The weapons of your warfare, they know carnal, but they mighty through God to pulling down strong gold. So, some believers, they say, ah, is it, ah, I just win one battle, this is another battle, why is it coming? <laughs> it will come, oh. <laughs> Praise God. It's a consistent one because it's a battle, it's, a, it's just like you see, it's everybody now, you see Russia, you see um, Ukraine, it's a battle for territory. Huh? It's a battle for territory. Uh, Russia is saying now we want to set up if uh, Europe and US come near our borders and they come and set up their things in you. I mean, that means and they, you can have it. 
So it's a territorial battle. It's a natural thing. Put two dogs near one another, you will see fight. They are fighting for their territory. This is my territory. Why, why do you want to come and erode into my territory? You can't have my territory. So we can't do without this spiritual warfare because there's the ruler of the kingdom of the here that is operating. It, it's, it, 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 there is a kingdom of this world. There's the person that rules and wanting to bring you under a subjection. But do you have another ruler, the kingdom of heaven, who is in your life that is able to grant you the victory? And not to grant you the victory who has, come, who has made you to be his ambassador, here or not, representing his interest, enforcing righteousness, enforcing truth. You can't so, 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 that's, so, so that's why we can't compromise any longer. One of the issues with Jesus is that it was said that to be the king of what? The king of truth. You know? I said, Pilate said, yeah, he said, he's the king of truth. Yeah, he said, I am. And there's much false in this world. There are a lot of lies. People want you to compromise at every step because there is a king that rules in the atmosphere wanting us to slip off suggesting into our hearts that you could do it better this way. It's all over us in the place of work. Of course, I know one bishop that's doing it. Why can't you do it? I know one pastor that did it. I mean, if pastor, you are not a pastor, you are just a member of the church and a pastor told a lie. So what's the big deal that you are saying you can't tell a lie? I, I don't know whether you have had that said to you before. What's the problem? Even the most known bishop, we saw, we saw him coming with his secretary and they lodged together in an hotel for over a night. So what's the big deal? What, what are you talking about? I know. And uh, we know him more than we know any other pastors in Iran. So what are you talking about? It's a normal thing. Why don't you do it? There's a king in the power of the year suggesting to our mind. But we must stand for the truth. But it's not about you. That's where I'm driving at. It's not about you. It's about his kingdom that you represent. It's about his kingdom that you are an ambassador. It's about his kingdom that he has committed into your hand. He said he has committed into our hand the ministry of reconciliation, both to we reconciling them back to God. That's why we are existing. We are just not ordinary people. He said had made us to be the minister. So when Christ came, the anointing came upon our life to be his minister, to represent his kingdom interest wherever you go. You are not, uh, 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 the last my message, you know, is simplify it. That you can't say that I'm not a full-time worker. One day in my ministry, one pastor who is a full-time minister came to me and said, Abraham, you are not a full-time, but you even do more than we. Who say, I say, it's, it's your own definition. <laughs> it's not God's definition. The day God saved me, you know, I'm in, into full-time ministry. The one I'm doing in the secular is just to uh, come as a second priority. This is the first priority. This is what, I mean, God has said in his word. And I believe him. He says, seek ye for the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things that the people, so my heart is in his seeking his kingdom. So if the uh, demand for God's kingdom come, it takes my priority because I know that he's going to pay my bill. There's nobody that can pay my bill. <laughs> I mean, it's only when we don't understand. I say, so, 24-7, I'm available for him, even in the office. Because if I'm about to sign a contract and uh, my pastor called me, that where are you? I depend on 
the radio as well. I'm, I'm going to tell him in 20 minutes, in 10 minutes, in 30 minutes, I'll be with you. I'm going to terminate whatever I'm doing because he's done it over and over again for me. I mean, I remember I was going to get paid for a contract and we had to have a retreat and so he gave me some assignment to do and uh, we got to the retreat grant and I couldn't get signal to call and so my heart was in it. Naturally, as a human being, it's always a conflict. I say, well, if I miss this check, uh, what's going to happen? I uh, struggle. I say, well, if I miss it, God will take care. I eventually settle for God. And we had all the time of the retreat. And the following week, I got to the office, and the check was not ready. So I said, praise God. If I miss God, <laughs> I miss on both sides. And the day I was driving to the office that my check was not ready, I, as I was about driving into that office, the CEO was about driving off. So when he saw that day, God just specifically instructed me to put on a full uh, national wear, which we call Agbada in our own place. So I pulled that on. So I, as I drove in, the man was driving off, and he was traveling. But when he saw a man inside a car with full Agbada, he said, this man must be looking for me. So he drove back to his office. <laughs> so he was awaiting me. So <laughs> when I entered his office, I met him, um, and uh, he said, well, after, what, do you have, what have you come to do? I introduced myself. I told him, I said, even I want a contract variation. That means I want the money to go up. Oh, so he said, I, so I gave him all the documents. Oh, he said, you know what? I'm approving it, but I have to call a meeting so that we have to consider it and approve it together. He gave me a date. When I came that date, and the table is, and I said, all I will say, after it, he called me to his office. He said, what went wrong today, Mr. Ogushola? I was then known as Ogushola. He said, What? He said, the way you spoke to me brilliantly the other day is not the way you speak today. If you had spoken the way you speak today, I wouldn't have approved it in the first time. So I was wondering what he said the other time that I didn't say today. I just gave that as a testimony that in our life, it's God that takes control. Yeah, I'm not saying that we should be lazy. I'm not saying we should not sharpen our skill but it is God that bless all our efforts that's what I'm saying so by what I'm saying by the real issue that we are addressing is that our total life is with God he saved us for a purpose he called us for a purpose like I rounded up the other day Jesus said I'm the way Jesus in your way and you are pursuing what he has said and you are minded about what he's mindful about because I mean sin should be something that should be a repudiating thing to us because that's what killed Jesus on the cross of Calvary we cannot be fine toying with sin we cannot be fine coming around with him yeah, we say, well, in some society like your society, they even say that you shouldn't name sin again. I mean, there are some churches in America you shouldn't, you shouldn't talk about sin because the king of the power of the here is walking around the clock. Yeah, we're talking about reaching people cross-culturally and in our bit to learn skills sometimes, the devil may allow us to reduce sin and not talk about it. And so what then are we doing if we are not talking about it? That's what killed Jesus on the cross of Calvary. Just for your sin. Because that's what makes the difference. That's why God had to look for a way to redeem, redeem humanity back to himself. All through Old Testament, the people, even David that we talked about, they were not absorbed from sin. So he has to 
you know, look for a way and said, okay, let me give the best that heaven can give to this to mankind so that I can redeem them back to myself. Because he loved us so much. He created us in his own image, in his likeness. He delegated us with that power. Everything that he created, he called Adam. He said he should give them name. Supply all his needs. So there's this intense burning love of humanity in the heart of God. And so that's why he has to send his son. And that's why Jesus needs to pay all this price. Even this sickness, this that we're talking so much about in the book of first, uh, Peter, that he said, by his child we were healed. He said he hung him on the tree in order to destroy. That's the first thing. Because most sicknesses, most of infirmities are brought even by sin. So when that power is destroyed, when that hold, when the root of sin is taken care of, we live only for him. And we need it. We need it. And we will see if you turn your Bible with me to the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 1. Daniel chapter 1. I read there in verse. Verse 8. And Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not divide himself with a portion of the king's food, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the Enoch that he might not defile himself. And the resultant effect of that is in verse 9. And God brought Daniel into grace and mercy with the prince of the Enoch. And the prince of the Enoch said unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king. Well, let's leave that place. Let's just jump to Daniel chapter 2. Verse 17. There may be a read from verse 16 for better understanding. And Daniel went in and asked the king that he give him time and that he will show the king the interpretation. Then Daniel went to his house and made the kings known to Ananiah, Michelle, and Azariah, his companion. To petitions, mercies of the God of heaven concerning this mission that Daniel and his fellow should not perish with the rest of the wives of Babylon. Then the mystery was revealed unto Daniel in my vision for which Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Let me stop there. For spiritual warfare, you need people to pray with. We need what? Jesus show us by bringing in three disciples sometimes they will wrestle, you know, when he was about going to the cross, he called them you know, and pray, let's pray together that's our savior many a times he bring them to pray along with him Daniel had companions let's pray together there is no Christian that should run alone. Where two or three are gathered in my name. Do you have a person that when you are weak is supporting you in prayer? So he went in to these people. And I am Michelle and Azariah, which we call Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were his companions. His companions in the faith. And the Bible will say, and Peter went to his companions. 
in the New Testament, and you will see the apostle going to their companions. You will see Paul as mightily use of God, he will still report back to the elders in Jerusalem because he believed they are praying for him. Who is praying for you? Who are you praying with? When you go out to minister, but, and what went in David to do with them? Verse 18, to petition mercies to petition mercies of the God of heaven concerning this mystery. So, he determined in his heart that he was not going to spoil himself with the kings, but he didn't do it in his own natural ability. That's all about it concerning spiritual warfare. Jesus has paid the price. He has destroyed the root cause of sin, but we need to go pray. We need to beseech evil for the mercies of God upon our life, upon our family, that sin will not come near our habitation. And then when we are free, then we go out as God's ambassador. We go out as with the ministry that he has committed in the heart to invade territories to pull people out to remit their sin to forgive their sin because he has given us that authority to who sin you remit stand remitted to who sin you forgive he stand forgiving and many a times we don't know that authority even when we pray I mean for those who are close to us our children and we have remitted their sin and the devil uh, you know, aggravate the issue by making the child to go and do some charity putting. And you say, God better have just prayed for him. But he has given you that authority. If you are acting right, just like we are saying now, you have remitted his sin, it's remitted. Those things that are coming out practically that you are seeing is for the devil to want to uh, get you out of what God has done. Because the moment, you know, you get aggravated and you know built up in your anger you are not allowing the holy spirit to walk his walk but it's just like you pray for sickness the root cause is there with but that time it could become so intense but as you believe god you just discover that the thing will just disappear and you begin to wonder where is this pain that is coming but if you get agitated in your mind and you are saying, but I've prayed now, so where is God now? That means faith is gone. So, but if God has helped you to destroy the root cause of sin and you are standing as his ambassador, as his minister, you have ministered what he said, you should believe. In that community, that God is leading you to, you have prayed. That's why we have discovered from statistics that we just discovered that a part of mission work is to do spiritual warfare, people going to pray and prophetic praying, maybe taking sons, God leading them to some uh, idol places and so on and so forth. Then you discover that uh, sometimes you have a boundary between a community that has been prayed for and a community that have not been prayed for. And we see that when you are preaching the gospel in this community where you have done spiritual uh, work, the people are more receptive to the gospel than the other community. Because something has shifted in the atmosphere, in the spiritual realm. And the same way it happens, we must go out boldly, do enough spiritual warfare, and believe God, and trust in God that all he has said for you to do, you'll be able to do in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So, but like we have said, like we have read here, as Daniel did, we make up our mind. We don't allow sin to have dominion over our life. We don't allow the devil to make us to gratify the flesh again. 
to allow the lust of eyes to the, the, the pride of life uh, to have effect on our life and uh, we can't do it uh, we can only do it by God walking through us uh, from what we have read as we have prayer partners and people that are praying with us and we pray and then we will be able to see uh, those things make manifest but it can come in a multi-dimensional way that sin really it said like I've said uh, in this world because like uh, the last speaker said the message has not changed but the methods must change because the same way that the devil hits at the world before is not the same way it's eating presently it changes tactics as well too. I was analyzing uh, some times ago uh, some believers said, well, believers are no longer uh, committed to the, especially in our nation, that in those days when you come for a meeting, people come in for a meeting. I said, do you know where the devil says? Say no. That day that you are talking, when you graduate, as a graduate, you easily get a job. <laughs> Praise God. Even my own friend that opted to work when they finished West African school certificate exam and they were employed as secretary then with 84 naira per month as a salary. With that 84 naira, they could afford to rent a one wing apartment. Many of you know one wing apartment, you know, a sitting room and two bedrooms. They could buy a fridge, they could buy a cooker, and maybe by the time they work one year or two years, they could save up and buy a Volkswagen or a Subaru car. Yeah. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, and in primary school then, we close by 1.15. And in secondary school, we close by 2.15 or thereabout. So the teachers, they had time to serve God there. They were committed to God. But now, even in primary school now, they will do lesson until 5 p.m. I, 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 many people, they don't know how the devil changed his taxes. So that means the teacher won't close until about 5.30. So a person that closes in the place of 4 or 5.30, you are expecting him to come for service in the church by 5? Is it going to be convenient for him? It will close by 5.30. He needs to take care of the children, give them food. And so, and some of them, they still even struggle. They come to church. By the time they come to church by 6, they are tired. They are sleeping. We are saying the devil is after them. We are even driving them away out of the church. <laughs> because we didn't analyze the way the devil has changed his life. And we didn't know that he, the devil is what? After the church. But in this environment, you know what the devil has done. So we must check our tactics too. We need to redirect our prayer warfare against the government policy, against issues that the king of the power of the year is using to destroy the people. Now today, I mean, I have a lady in my office, got a master's, PhD in view, and her salary was 15,000 naira monthly. What would she do with that? Even to get transport to come to church becomes difficult. And so it's a multidimensional battle against sin. Against the power of the king. Of the power that rule in the year. But as we expose him, as we see the skill, the wisdom, the grace to overcome. God will give to you and I in the name of Jesus. The church will win the battle because it has paid for the church. Pay the precious with the precious blood of it that the church will march on and the gate of hell shall not prevail. You will overcome. The church will overcome. We will march triumphantly in Europe, in England, Righteousness will run on our street. 
truth shall be all over and through Jesus we shall win. Let's bow down to pray. I don't know what God has spoken to your heart. Like I said yesterday, we are here and as you are sensing God in your life, why don't you bring it into God? Because one thing is this word has gone out. It will work wonders in your life. Through his wonder, you will prevail in your community. Through you, Birmingham shall be brought to the saving power of Jesus Christ. Through you, United Kingdom shall be brought to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Through you, Europe, the fire that is ignited will run through all over Europe and globally we shall win. No matter what may be happening, politically, socially, whatever be the schemes and strategies and whim and caprices of the prince of the power of the air, we will bring him down because Jesus paid for it on the cross of Calvary. And we will represent him. We will not slack back. We will not go back. We will run through in the name of Jesus. The word of God is coming to your life. You are receiving strength. You are receiving grace. You are receiving wisdom. You are receiving power. And that power will take you through in the name of Jesus. All your inheritance in Christ Jesus shall be made manifest to run through. Thank you, faithful father. Blessed be your holy name. Give you praise, Lord. Give you thank, give you worship because you rule and reign. Blessed be your holy name. Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Let's give Jesus a round of applause, please. <laughs> Wonderful. That was a timely word. That was a timely word. That was a timely word. Pray God will give us grace that all this that we hear, we put them into practice in Jesus' name. And in spiritual warfare, God will make us giants. God will make us soldiers of the gospel. Anywhere we go, the devil will know that Jesus has a man. So shall it be in Jesus' name. So, so without taking much more, more of our time, we are going to go straight to the next uh, thing on our program. So I want to introduce to us a man of God all the way from Atlanta, Georgia, from the United States. I want to call on our pastor, Pastor Paul Atta, to come to the stage and take the next program. I met his ministry for the first time on the YouTube. He doesn't know, but I knew him uh, <laughs> some years ago when I was looking for daddy. I was looking for daddy's contacts. So I typed his name on the YouTube, and then Sole's ministry came up. So I started watching him and watching what they were doing. That was how I came to know you, sir. <laughs> so you are welcome. Come on board. Let's give Jesus a round of applause. Father, thank you for this moment. Thank you for all the blessings we have received since we came together. Take glory, take honor, take worship. In Jesus Christ's name, we are prayed. We thank God for this opportunity to be here and uh, I believe very sincerely that every one of us here has got a lot we have grown up largely in the Christian, the Christian churches we have had messages we have had experiences we have been to some churches in the past, but we have still here, and thank God that we are still here to share in this uh, gathering. Because this place is a place of practical Christian living. A place where we take in. That's why I came away from Atlanta, because I've been here in Birmingham some time ago, and I, what I got was such that made me to walk in the reality of my profession as a Christian. And God will bless us more and we are going to be transformed in Jesus' name. Now I'm considering a message titled 
defeating Satan's scheme in world evangelism. Now, I know many of us can preach this message based on our past experiences, scripture by scripture, scripture by scripture. But I'm going to handle this message from three angles. One is encounters, and the second one, and the third one, is the experiences that I got from two women that surround me, my wife and my daughter. What God is doing in their life or is using them to do at this moment. So I'm going to share some testimonies about them. To let us know that the Christian life is much more than being committed to a church uh, fellowship traditionally as we knew it before regular, being regular and able to be part of the system is good that is good, it's a foundation but it should be a tool for us to accomplish God's purpose in our life and so it will be our responsibility as individuals to find the fulfillment of our purpose in God's scheme for us Satan has some scheme so let's open our Bible to 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 2 11, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. And it said, Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, so we are not ignorant of his devices. Devices means schemes. And when you have a definition, it gives you clarity of understanding. And at times, when I want to get a definition, I go to synonyms. What do we mean by Schemes, what would be what do we mean by devices? God they give you alternative English words that can gel, can rhyme, that could be cool with you in terms of your understanding of what the scripture is saying. The scheme, for example, means a method device for making or doing something or achieving an end. Scheme stresses calculation of the end view and may apply to a plan motivated by craftiness and self-interest. Is that familiar with us? Yes, on both the side of the devil of Satan and also on our own side. And we're going to touch on that shortly. Now, what are the synonyms of the wires? It means dishonesty, duplicity, machinations, stratagem, artifice, cheating, chicken or chicanery, as we may call it and deviousness. These are the schemes of the devil. These are the schemes of Satan that make evangelism, world evangelism difficult or oppose world evangelism. And we know that evangelism is the sharing of the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. Letting others know about Jesus Christ. If you did truly have him, if you have encountered Jesus, if you know the blessing of being a Christian, if you know the promises of eternity, if you have understanding, you have a hold on what it means to be Christian, there's nothing that will stop you from wanting other people to know same. On my way here, I had to take a book, read a book, uh, a, short, a short biography about William Carey from this nation, the, the United Kingdom. And I read through and then I was challenged. I'm talking about things that happened in the 17-somethings in this country when the means of transportation were by foot, most people, or horse drum buggies. And yet, someone who had less than 12th grade education had a mind strong enough to ship himself and his family with a little baby all the way to India, spending about five, six months on the sea and on a kind of ship that the safety cannot be guaranteed. And then God used that person to accomplish so much. He went to the one-way ticket, never came back. Married three times. Two wives died before he died. I, when I was reading this book, I was challenged. I 
So what kind of Christian, what kind of Christian am I? I am. I mean, and we are talking about a society that was struggling in those days, and they could produce a human being like this. What about this age of IT, age of technology, age of science? But then, and I now realize that it is the strategy, the scheme of the devil that make us feel less concerned about evangelism. Evangelism, by definition, is the spreading of the gospel by public preaching and personal witnesses anywhere in the world. And thank God we have the tools to do much more than any of the missionaries that we have ever read about in the past. We have them. We'll touch on that also very soon. But I want to consider one very strong strategy of the devil that makes evangelism what evangelism difficult. And that is what I call our ego. The devil works on our ego and our personality and our sense of looking in war. The same thing that made the fire of revival in the western world to die. That age of looking at yourself and not looking now, let's read Philippians chapter 2, verse 4, and Romans chapter 3, and chapter 12, verse 2. Philippians chapter 2, verse 4. Philippians chapter 2, verse 4. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. I had an encounter on my way here. When I entered the underground train in, um, in London to go to the station that would bring me here, as soon as uh, the stations from Heathrow, other people were getting in. And some people started to sit around and look at them. And my mind started to race. Who are these people? I hope they're not carrying bombs. I hope these are handbags that can contain bombs. I don't know what you think about people when you encounter them. You see them, they're so black, they're so tall, they're white. They're... So anyway, this encounter on my way was such that as soon as I started to see this kind of, this type of people from certain part that I think of the world that could do so many things. And I also have an idea about uh, bombing in uh, buses in London and all this kind of thing. So, my mind started to race. That is the strategy of the devil, giving me wrong, evil thoughts about human being. I'm not thinking about those souls as somebody's child. Knowing the place they come from, that they need salvation. So there's no care. We don't care. We are Christians. We are saved. We are born again. That is true but we don't care for human beings. Nobody cares. And because we don't care, the devil loads us with evil thoughts about people. That creates fear. You see them all around. I see you, you already condemn them. Without even thinking that these are, that, these are somebody's children. They have more than, they have father, they have brothers, sisters. And above all, they are God's creatures that need salvation. So that sense of compassion, of caring, not caring for other people, turn us off. And it makes evangelism very difficult. And then the devil brings fear. They don't listen. And then we say, they don't, like in, in the Western world, in Europe and America, you approach them and they say, they, I don't do God. And you are mad. Oh, that's the attitude. They don't do God. God, I've never heard about God. There's, there's so much ignorance. I don't know about here. But in the U.S., you encounter a young person. Who is Moses? Who is David? Do you have a Bible? That's damn so ignorant. Why? But I've never heard anything about your Jesus 
They have never heard anything about your Bible. But they know a lot about the new age, the occult, the yoga, and all these things that are coming up. And these people are working over time, meeting them in, in the gyms. Oh, let me give you an example before I go further. This morning, you know, in, uh, in the hotel where I, where I stayed, it's a, a holiday, holiday inn. I came down and I said, can I have a Bible? I said, oh, okay. Because there was no Bible placed there. Like Gideon Bible in those days, when you see some, some hotels. So there's none. And I said, okay, I think we have one Bible. They spent about 15, 20 minutes. I came back and said, sorry, we don't have a Bible. We used to have one before. Brother, look at that. This is a world that has, is now withdrawn Bible from circulation. So that you can't even imagine somebody you know, staggering to a Bible in a hotel, like that holiday in there, and read it. So the word of God is being snatched from public circulation. That is serious. That's why we must preach. If they cannot get the Bible to read, and I cannot, uh, you cannot accuse them to talk about Jesus because you fear, will they eat you up? Will they eat me up? I'm preaching this to myself. That is the challenge. Because we are too, I'm too conscious of myself. They will insult me. They'll look down on me. They'll think I'm weird. They think it's not cool. And the devil will say, Girl, this is what is cool. Go and do your tattoo. This is what is cool. Go and put your mar marijuana and snap and I'm a smoke. This is what is cool. So we are not selling. We are not going. But the enemy is going. So the devil is, use, is using again the strategy of our ego, self preservation, of uh, not caring for souls. But we are interested in rejoicing and gathering, building the tower kind of Babel these days with some of these mega churches. But look at what God is doing. Look at the trend of things in the world today. This mega something, do you know, the, do you, are, you are hearing the scanner that are coming out from Australia to US to everything. What's going on? God is saying, this is not my gathering. Whatever is there that we do not know, they will be exposed. Because the will of God must be fulfilled, must be accomplished. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. And God has saved me and you to be witnesses to Jesus Christ on this earth. You are the gospel. I am the gospel. And some of us may be called to mission. But then, we have to shine the light of the Lord that we have in us anywhere we are. And that has to be a, a sense of consciousness. You know, when we read the book of Esther, chapter 4, verse 16, you remember? Esther said, when it became certain that the Jews were going to be killed, all over, there was going to be a massacre. He said what? He said, if I die, I die. Not because he merited death, but because of the death of the rest of the Jews in the kingdom. He said, I'm ready to die. So ego, self-preservation, self-consciousness is not there. For, as far as Esther was concerned, the same like Jesus Christ is God, but he's here to come and die for us. So, but Esther said, if I die, I die. Not because he was meant to, be, to, to die, but because of other people, he put his ego, he put his life aside and said, I'm ready to die so that these people will not be saved. I pray God will give us the same spirit and the same orientation in our Christian life in Jesus' name. Amen? Excuse me. You know, growing up, when I see people preaching and they drink water, I want to say, oh, it's a show. <laughs> well, guys, <laughs> I said, what, I, what should we drink? Guess what? My, my mouth has dried as, water, as, as a boom just now until I got to the people and I said, oh, it's real. It's, it's not a show. You know, praise the Lord. Yeah. So Esther put aside her ego, put aside 
her self-preservation because of other people. That's exactly the mind that God wants us to have. We are supposed to look at human beings and see them as human beings who are in need of your help or my help, who are in need of Jesus Christ. And now that will lead me to give a testimony. My wife is a, is a, is a counselor. This is therapist, yeah, we call it therapist. This is psychotherapist. Now, she, she meets people all the time. I know women when come back, come back, by ethics, you not tell her exactly what their problem is, something like that, but you, you talk around it. And the global view I have is this, is that everybody, most people that you think they are all right, that is that tell you they don't do God, that have, have no knowledge about Jesus Christ, they have so much problem that if you can have access to them, believe me, they will receive your Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. She cancel professors, she can cancel um, uh, generals, she cancel people who are highly placed, lawyers, CEOs, and by the time she meets them, they will tell her, we are not doing Jesus. I left that, that, that therapist because she bring it, it's pretty to me. I don't want that. Guess what? The same people will call her. When they got into a place of evil encounter, can you pray for us? Example one. She told my wife at the beginning of her of the meeting, and I don't do it. God, God, my wife tried to say, Do you believe in this? No, no, she said, I don't go there, please. That's why I left that, 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 that therapist. It's okay. And then COVID came. And the husband was dying. And the husband was in a coma. Say, hey, Miss Comfort, can you please pray for my husband? He said, Really? You want me to pray for your husband? Why not? No wonder there's a saying that there is no atheist in the foxhole at the war front. You know why? Because the atheists know that anything could happen, and that would be the end of that atheistic belief. Because he doesn't know what is on the other side. You know? So what am I talking about? What I'm talking about is the fact that we have a lot to offer in terms of evangelism as we encounter people at the park, at the gym. Do you go to the gym? Do you go to the park? Do you are interested in, 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 in the affairs of other people? I'm not saying you are, going, you are going to intrude in somebody's life. But do we care enough about the reality of eternity in hell by those who don't know Jesus Christ? By getting close to share the Lord and goodness with them. Even on the street. When I came, came here uh, yesterday, the first time, and I saw, or, I mean, you did, you did not to be told that you need not be told as as you are, as you are in this environment that many people around here are in another religion and they cover themselves or taking uber or taxi majority of the people that are involved in these businesses you know they are they don't know christ i asked them how are you mr muhammad mr ali that's the name i saw how is ramadan oh one, if I could say something about, uh, about the, the Ramadan, one said, oh, uh, what about your Easter? You fast like us and all this thing. That is, we have started. We have started. We have to share something. There's, you now have a common ground to begin. But if you take Uber, you take taxi, you just sit there with your Bible. You don't even care. These people are hungry for the gospel. They are not what they are by their own design. They were born into that environment, into that family. Let me give you an example. On my way from Atlanta to London, um, two seats to the other side, and I was on the aisles. And the lady came. I was there before her. And then she said, can you excuse me? I said, yes. She got into her, uh, her seat near the, by the window. And then she said, where are you from? In my mind, did that ego that human uh, importance. I look at her. First I said, you ask, 
I suspecting that uh, I don't belong here because you, you can see me what's wrong. A white lady, an English lady from uh, Cambridge. That's where she, she grew up. I say, I'm from Atlanta. Cocky, with cocky sense of relevance and importance. I'm from Atlanta. They say, okay, okay, you're yeah, welcome, thank you. Get us look at me. Then, somebody tell me, why, why are you proud? What's your problem? He knows you are from Atlanta. That's where you are coming from. This girl, this lady is asking for more. He's telling you, where do you come from originally? I know that. And later I turned to her, say, oh, but I'm from Nigeria. He said, oh, okay. Oh, okay. The next thing she did, guess what? She brought um, uh, her phone. I said, I'm a Catholic. And uh, our Reverend Father is a Nigerian guy. Before I knew, she brought the name, the name of the guy, something. Do you know what? This guy is from Benue State. I mean, her Reverend Father is from Benue State, from Boko, where is my own community, my, my community is close by. I was excited. I said, oh, this, that was, believe in me. I had the best flight experience I've ever had. Flying with that woman from Atlanta to London. You know why? Because she has opened up. How she lost a, a child uh, 10 years ago. How she's going back. He's based in the US. But her parents are alive. The mother is sick, is, uh, almost dying with cancer. And she's going. She doesn't know what to do. And then uh, her friends gave her books how to take care of people who are going towards the end of their life. That opened up for me to minister to her. She said, remember me in prayer. I said, why not? I remember you. She was the one that directed me to Houston, where I could get the, the train to come here. I never had that kind of a... From Heathrow, it, I thought I was going somewhere else. She Googled everything and gave me how to go about it. Look at What if I had just kept myself, my cockiness, self Interest, not caring uh, that she's anything. What does she want from me? I wouldn't have got that opportunity. I wouldn't have been able to minister to her. I wouldn't have even known what I told her. And that is exactly most people. They, make they have so much. They are looking for help. And I pray you'll be the help from now on. To as many people as encounter every opportunity God gives to you. The Bible says you preach in season and out of season. Those seasons the Lord is talking, the Bible is talking about is the opportunity. Every opportunity, every encounter. See it as an opportunity to talk to somebody about Jesus Christ. See it as a chance to let others know about Jesus. There is no rule about it. All human beings are basically the same. We have different culture, that is fine. But the need of men and women I feel the same. You either have Christ and then you need him. Or you have Christ and then you let, let him be known to others in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, too, I'll tell you or a testimony of my daughter. My daughter had been on a, it is a program they call it Clubhouse. She started it, it was like a joke. Right now, as I'm talking to each other, three, there's 400 people. And she had, she's so active on it. Not that she's there. She has trained people to moderate, to take care of the clubhouse, whether she's there or not. It's called Cool Christian Corner. 24 7 is running. When she has time, she goes there. And she has done it in such a way that on Monday, Tuesday, all the days of the week, she has assigned people to take care of that. And so there was this clubhouse when the Ukrainian war broke out. And in the course of talking, you know, people say, oh, this Strange things are happening. Oh, people are being killed. I know that story was going on. I'm that day. You know, idea comes from others. You don't have everything. You don't have all the information you need to succeed in life. You need encounters. You need orders. You need to borrow ideas from others. You need to listen to others to know the needs of your environment. And they say, can't you do something about black people in Ukraine that have been neglected in the in, 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 in the attention of the world. You remember those things going on? And I say, okay, black guy, black people uh, over 
10,000 of them in Ukraine, when the war broke out, everybody had to run for their lives. And then it seemed that they were discriminated against. That's the issue. And so, yes, and they started to raise money. And at the last, last count, they raised over $70,000 in a very short time and distributed them to uh, um, African black students that are going around. Some of them needed to get to the border quickly. And then it came. It came in big deal. Guess what? Why am I saying this? At the end of the day, do you know, because it's a Christian directed base uh, a clubhouse, there was a network. There's a Christian, a Nigerian doctor who had been practicing in Ukraine at the border with Poland, a Christian with Bibles. And then she was the one to link up with them. And then found out that there are many people trapped in the area, the Donba area that Russia had been bombarding for a long time. They couldn't come. And there's this couple, a Nigerian guy, a Nigerian guy, uh, a doctor with a white. Ukraine uh, wife, four children, the wife is expecting another one, and they came to a point in their life that they had given up. And so they, he said they were now, they came to the house and just be waiting for a bomb to drop on them so that they can die. And then the, the Nigerian doctor, a lady, in, at the, who, who had been practicing at the border of Poland, contacted my daughter and said, you have been helping others. There's a, a family now that is, is critically in need. We need $5,000. A volunteer cab driver, a uh, Ukrainian that cra, ca, cab driver said, he will only go there to help bring those people out, and his own life was on, line, on the line. And so um, he cannot take anything less than $5,000. Can we get the money? Of course. Through cryptocurrency, the money was wired to that doctor, give it to the Ukrainian, Ukrainian uh, tax cab driver, he drove, he took, he put his life on the line, went there, and knocked on, he had to force them to come out. And they come out, they came out. Do you know these were delivered to the border with Poland? Praise the Lord. They were, they, they were delivered to that border. But the point is this, that's not the issue now. The issue was, there and there, the doctor, Nigerian lady doctor there, whose goal, you see, whatever, our aim is that people should be saved. Yes, they can be rescued physically. What about salvation? Minister to them. Can you imagine somebody running who had given up coming out? Now he know that it was the mercy of God. That boy there and there gave his life to Christ with his wife. Amen. And it, it, it documented, received his Bible, confessed Christ again. He said, Yeah, actually, I was a Christian when I, when I was in Nigeria before I came over here. But you know, I gave up, you know, but now I know that God is real. Praise the Lord. What am I saying? What am I talking about? Every opportunity, let Christ be known. You know, every chance, in season and out of season, we are the gospel. Our life, should, we should have it as a priority. We should have an understanding that Christ in me is the hope of glory. We should not think too much about ourselves. That is what the world does. They don't care. Everybody's about himself. Nobody, you know, who don't, they don't see, they see human beings as three, not as human beings. Everyone wants to succeed their own way. You know, but we are here by the grace of God in the Western world. I pray God will give us this realization that we are here for a purpose. And like we know in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and 20, the scripture is talking uh, 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 19, 18 to 20. The Bible is saying, go ye into the world and preach the gospel. It's, it's a mandate. It's a command. Until we can understand the depth of that command, it will not have meaning in our life. Until we know that it is important. It's Jesus Christ that said it. It's not Paul. It's not James that wrote it. So it's so important that we go out and preach. And then we should not see preaching evangelism as a formalized way of, you know, okay, the church will gather on Saturday, we'll go out on the street and it's put up. That's okay, we can do that. But we should see it as something that's enough. You know, that is what we are, anywhere we are. It's so important. And churches, ministers should bring up 
uh, 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 members to realize this truth. William Carey was never prodded, cajoled to take a risk to go to India. But stoning is, it's at that time, you know, he brought a Baptist group and they say the Church of England was against them. In fact, for them to enter India, they were denied visa by the uh, uh, British uh, Indian Training Company. But this man said he must go. They said he was even a sick person. He was not that strong. But you know what God does? Because he was on a mission for eternity, God kept him to live up to 70 something years. He outlived two, two wives, outlived two, two, two children. He had a lot of tragedy in his life. Lost two daughters. Before she left here, lost the first son there. So much. But he knew that the God had given him something to do. He mandate. Every trouble you can ever imagine he had. And that's what Satan does. He created difficulty. He challenges us. And that's why we have to defeat him by what we all know with prayer and then doing God's work to annoy him so that he can go bananas. That is what, that's how to defeat Satan. To defeat Satan is to be engaged, fully engaged in doing God's work. And which other works priority? That Jesus be made known to the rest of the world in Jesus' name. Amen? And so, brethren, may God give us this understanding. You know, I lamented, lament my own life this far, having gone this far as a Christian, and I asked myself, what have I accomplished? How many souls have you won? What are you doing? You go to church, you're a regular church goer, less, you have anointing. But you know the devil, Satan, one of the strategies, as I'm around of, of the, one of the strategies of, this, of the devil is what? To keep our organized church system busy in things that please us and make us to look inward. Miracle, revival, prophecy that is going on, everyone is going about. What are they all about? They're about me and you, about me, my stomach, my family. Protection, preservation. He's not, talk, he's not telling about other people. But Jesus wants us to put down our ego ourselves and look at others. I want to read that scripture again. I have to bring it to a close. Uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 4, and then Romans chapter 12, verse 3. Philippians chapter 2, verse 4. It says, read, Listen, say them. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Then Romans chapter 12, verse 3. Just like a repeat of that, uh, um, of what we have read. Romans chapter 2, verse 3. Romans chapter 12, sorry, verse 3. It says, for I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of yourself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. God has given us faith to a level of thinking as ourself as word of nothing, but of the grace of God. Whatever you have, whatever you are, is by the grace of God. The position you occupy now is by the grace of God. And God has given us this mandate to go into the world and preach the gospel. And he said, nothing shall by any means hurt us. We have the spirit of God, just as we have been told earlier by uh, some of our preachers. We have all it takes to do God's will. God has not given us the spirit of fear. Like we fear people on the street because we cannot, they're strange. They they look different from us. Because we have the spirit of power, the spirit of sound mind. And God has called us to be engaged, to be part of his work. It is, God is the one that does it. Myself and you have no capacity to win anybody. But we have a place to be part of what God is doing. God will do his work. You see, when the, the scriptures say, when sin increases, the grace of God much more increases. You know, it, God knows how to handle his world. But God wants me and you to be part of what he's doing. Because in then shall our own life be fulfilled. 
We have to be concerned about people. Whether we see them on the street and where they are, let's not look down on anybody. Whether they are high or low, they need Christ. And you don't know the extent of people's need until you get close to them. Let's get close to people. Let's not ignore them. Because the order, the enemy is out. Is on a rampage. New age, so all kinds of things we know. And then finally, let's engage in the social media and to let the gospel go. They are there, they are all over. And we cannot allow the devil to exploit all the things for itself. Several of them, I can't even name them all. And people are ministering there. You can have your own your podcast there. Somebody will listen to you. Whatever God laid upon you, say it. It will get to areas that you have never thought of reaching. That is the opportunity God has given to us today. If people that never knew a place, never had what's going on, can just risk himself and his family, like this guy, and then, hey, he went with all his family and perishing there. What about me and you? You can read everything about India, about Burma, about Ukraine, today, today, today. You can even pinpoint an individual that you want and communicate with them on the clubhouse and this other social media platform. May God give us the grace to be there with a genuine concern for the souls of men. God bless you. Shall we pray? Father, I thank you for this hour. Thank you for your mercy. Give us the heart to care for the souls of men. And give us the grace to be ministers of the good news, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that we can take advantage of every opportunity, every encounter to be evangelist to the world. And let not the devil take advantage of us through fear and through ego and through any form of distraction in our life. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah, we thank God for that exposition. The Lord will help us. Anywhere we see men, that's how, that every man becomes a mission field anywhere we go. And God will help us to be able to reach out to people without fear and without doubts in Jesus' name. Okay, so before the last, um, before the last session, I think um, Daddy would like to say one or two things. Uh, okay. All right. Thank you. All right. So we are going to do praise and worship for just 10 minutes. Okay. All right. Okay. No problem. All right. So sorry about that. We'll go straight to the last session. So Apostle Ted, uh, I met him for the first time in Birmingham before the COVID. <laughs> And the session he held in, in, in Birmingham was so wonderful. How God has used him in Niger, in Africa, and I think it was in Bauchi, right? In Bauchi State, Nigeria. Ah, okay, in Jigawa, yeah, so, yeah, Kano. So I know he walked up north in Nigeria as well. So God used him mightily in the apostolic ministry, in the healing of thousands of people. I got to the stage where, because of what God was doing, he didn't need to pray anymore. He was telling us himself that the people just lined up and he would just lay hands on them and say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And they were healing. I was like, ah, who is this man? I need, to <laughs> I need to get closer to him. So I collected his um, complimentary card. I kept it in my wallet for more than one year. But COVID came and scattered everything. I thought I would not see him again. Now I've met you again in Manchester. You are going nowhere. <laughs> Let's give Jesus a round of applause. Please welcome him with Jesus' love. He's taking the last session for this evening. Thank you, sir. Yeah. It's good to be a child of God. <laughs> You know, when you go around preaching the gospel, you don't do it 
as an apostle or an evangelist or something you do it as a son of the father that's that's the greatest privilege hallelujah father we just ask you that you come here with your holy spirit we we are desperately in need of you in everything we do and we need you to come here right now father i pray that you open my touch my heart open my heart and my and my mind to just deliver what you want to be delivered today and father we just come before you with a hungry heart and a open mind and and hungry for you hungry to be equipped hungry to to know you and make you known thank you that you come over this meeting with the spirit of revelation today come over me with revelation you come over all of us with revelation to take a one take us a step further with you hallelujah amen hey i want to start with uh, a story <laughs> i like stories especially true stories <laughs> um I, i'm leading a, a ministry with uh, some different work in west africa in nigeria niger Mali, Senegal, and uh, uh, in Mauritania, but the church in Mauritania is not really a part, it's not organizationally a part of our ministry because when I went to the, to the authorities in Mauritania, I wanted to register a mission organization. It was kind of hard since it, since it is death penalty to become a Christian. So the guy, I, the, the, the lady that was a lawyer that wanted to help me said, well, that's a challenge. But then I didn't hear from her anymore. Anyway, so we have churches in, uh, in different countries in West Africa. And once a year, we gather them in our headquarter. That is in Niger. And people say, headquarter in Niger? That's like, that's far into the bush. Why wouldn't it be in Nigeria or maybe Senegal? No, no, we have it in Niger, in the desert, <laughs> in the former capital of Niger called Cinder. And um, so maybe, I don't know, four years ago, we had um, one of these conferences. And, and uh, one of the pastors that was there was from Agadez. Anyone heard about Agadez? Yes. Agadez is like, uh, they call it the capital of the Sahara Desert. So it's, uh, it's the biggest city in the, it's, that is really into the desert, actually, except Khartoum in Sudan. Khartoum is bigger, but Khartoum is not, you know, it's along the Nile River, so it's a bit different. But anyways, we had our gathering there, and this pastor from Agadez came. And our meeting was, I think, from Tuesday till, or maybe, yeah, Tuesday night. Then we had a whole th Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and after Saturday meeting, they left back to their stations. So Friday night was the last meeting. And our pastor in, in Agadez came up to me. Actually, he's an amazing missionary from Nigeria. He's from uh, just close to Abuja. His name is Danjuma. Yeah, amazing guy. So he has been up in Agadez in this strictly Islamic place for many years. He leads uh, an orphanage and uh, two churches. And... Uh, when he came to the conference, the th I mean, on the third day on the conference, he said, Papa T, that's me. <laughs> they don't know how to say my name, like, 
So they say, he called me Papa T. So they say, Papa T, this has been a good conference, but I am so tired. I am exhausted. After all the persecution, all the trouble in the church, all, the, all of these things that are happening, we see people healed. We see many miracles. We see people come to Christ. But you see, I'm exhausted. I cannot do this anymore. It's, 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 it's just too much for me. It's, the burden is too much. I'm, I'm exhausted. I have no more energy. I know God can do anything through me, but I, if, it, if, if, if there's no change, I, I just have to leave that place and go back to Nigeria. I, it's too much for me. And I mean, Danjuma is a strong man of God. But so he said, can you, can you please pray for me in this meeting? And um, while I was preaching later, God reminded me that, hey, you have to pray for Danjuma. So I asked him to stand up. He was sitting on the right side of the congregation. And I said, Danjuma, can you please stand up? And uh, let's all stretch our hand toward him and, and pray for him. And, and everyone were praying. We all, the whole congregation, were just praying and blessing Danjoman. Everyone knew him. All the wonderful things that happened through his ministry and all of this. And, you know, so, so everyone were praying for him. And he was standing there just receiving. And it was beautiful to see how he was like drinking from the presence of God. And I, it made my, my heart a little better. <laughs> so I started preaching, and, or I continued preaching, and, and, um, and uh, I have no idea what I was talking about. But after a while, I felt the Holy Spirit says, pray for him once more. Bring him up front here. And bless him again. So I said, Danjuma, can you please come up here? We want to pray more for you and, and bless you. And so he came up in the front. And, um, and two or three of the other pastors came and put their hand on, hands on him. And, and we all prayed. And the Holy Spirit came powerfully up over him. And he, was, he fell to the ground. And um, he started like rolling upon and down like this and he th immediately he started crying he cried and cried and cried and then the, the, he, he was rolling up and then after a while he started laughing and he was laughing and laughing and laughing and laughing and then again he was crying and he was crying and crying and this went on I don't know how long but at least like 15 minutes and we were like wanted I was wanted to go on <laughs> in the meeting but he, he was crying and laughing so loud no one could hear anything so so uh, I tried to like say something but no one heard so so he was rolling up and down there and, and crying and laughing and suddenly no sound and he was he stopped moving. He didn't move at all. No sound, no movement. And I said, well, well, okay, I can continue preaching now. <laughs> so I continued, and we, after the preaching, we were ministering to people. Many people were touched by God in many ways. But Danjuma was, many people came up to the front to be prayed for. But Danjuma was just lying there. People were stepping over him, and he was just lying there. And the meeting was over. It was a really nice meeting. And the next morning, we had a short, like the last short meeting in the conference, and we sent most people home. But every year when we have this conference, we, we have a leaders' conference in our main church there. And then we take some other pastor out to the bush, to the real bush, to the, to the desert. And we have tent meetings. So 
with some of the unrich groups out there. So we did that. And Danjuma was one of the people coming with, with us. And uh, we, we had teachings in daytime and then we showed the Jesus film in the evening. And this was, actually it was in a, an area, a wonderful area. Damagaram uh, Takea. That's what the area is called. Damagaram Takea. And that, in that uh, area, we actually were able to plant the first church with the Dagara tribe. Have you heard about the Dagara tribe? No. I'm not surprised because normally when, when we plant a new church in any of these unreached places, I contact U.S. Center for World Missions, you know, to get it registered, like, you know, so people know what's happening. And I wrote to them and say, hey, we, we have now planted the church in the Dagra tribe. It's still very weak. It's not standing on its own yet, but we have believers there. And, and they were saying, Dagra tribe? I never heard about them. That was nice. That's a people group they haven't even heard about. <laughs> so uh, they are actually almost, they are related to the Kanuri. A big, big uh, people group, yeah. So, but we were there, and most of the people were from either Dagra tribe or Fulanis. And um, after uh, two, two, three days with meetings in the tent, I just saw why a group of people like gathering one place and they were just standing there looking at something. And when I looked at it, I said, Actually, I think they were standing there yesterday also. And the day, the day before yesterday, what's, what's happening over there? So I, I went up, it was like 20, 30 people standing there just, and I had to make my way in there to see what was happening. And you know, what I saw there was Dan, Dan Juma. The pastor from Agadez that was so totally exhausted. He was sitting there and his face was just shining. It was shining with the presence of God. And, and, and he was sitting there quoting some Bible verses or, 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 or just giving some jokes. And he was just sitting there really, really happy. He was so happy. And he was shining with the presence of God. And people were just like looking at him. And I also, I was like, what is this? And I said to him, Danjuma, what happened to you? And he said, why do you ask about that? You were the one that did it. Because I cannot do something like that. <laughs> but he said, when you called me up in that meet, last meeting, and when I fell down, I just felt it was like, like waves of the love of God and the glory of God that came over me. And, and it, it came like waves, like rolling over me. And we understood why we saw him rolling. <laughs> and he said, I, I was so, I was so filled with just awe. And, 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 and I saw myself as the, the greatest sinner. And then I saw myself as the most blessed person on the earth. And I had to cry because of my sin and weakness. And then I have to laugh because I was so loved. And, and then I, it, it came in waves. And it, it was just amazing, he said. And, and I was thinking that if this continues, I will, I, I cannot contain it. It's too much for me. And uh, and, and it just continued more and more. And just when he was about to say, Lord, you have to stop, 
that those waves of glory stopped. But then he said, two angels came while I was lying on the floor. And they took me in my shoulders, my arms, and they just took me up into heaven. And he said, I, 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 saw, I saw the heavenly city. The city of God, the city of love, the city of the glory of God. And I, and I said, God, I just thank you. This must be the greatest thing any person can experience. And he was just about to burst because of the presence of God. And then the two angels took him and they put him on the lap of the father. And he said, I have no idea if I was there for two minutes or two hours or two years. Just everything just disappeared. I was just totally just filled with the glory of God. And then he said, suddenly I was back in my body in the meeting, but actually the meeting was over. Everyone had gone home. <laughs> well, that wasn't true because I remember I asked one person to sit and watch him. <laughs> so there was one person there. And then after this, I hadn't talked with him after the meeting, you know. So he was shining. He carried the presence of God in such a powerful way that people were just drawn to him. They were just, they just had to look at him. You know, in Exodus, in Exodus, the last chapter in Exodus, is that 34, is it? Forty, chapter forty. Hmm. No, maybe it's not there. Maybe it's it says when when Moses had been on the mountain in the presence of God. He came down from the mountain in verse 28. Exodus 34, 28. It says, He was there for 40 days and 40 nights without eating and drinking. And he wrote, I, I, I got my Norwegian Bible there again, I forgot, sorry. <laughs> so I just like quoting it, translating it. Um, in verse 29, it says, So Moses went down from the Mount Sinai, and he had the, the two tablets of the testimony in his hand. But Moses didn't know that his skins, see, the skin of his face was shining because he had been speaking to him. And Aaron and all the Israelites, Israel's children saw that his skin was shining and they were fearing to come near to him. Moses had been there in the presence of God and he was shining so much that the people feared coming near to him. They were shining. You see, he had been in the glory of God. And you know, sister, I loved your worship here. It was very good. When we spent time in worship and in prayer and also listening to his word, we are, we are getting more and more touched by his spirit and filled by his spirit. And you know, when, when we really are 
touched by his glory and his presence. There is an, a repentance. There is a cry. God, remove from me every sin, every hindrance, every unclean thing in my life because I want, I want to get these evils out of my life and I want to be filled with your glory. God wants to fill you with his glory. He wants you to carry his glory and his kingdom. The tangible presence of his kingdom. So when Don Juma came back from his encounter, he was shining. Don Juma is someone who has been like laying down his life for the kingdom and for the gospel. But he had encounters with God before. And he had new ones more and more. And he was operating in the power of the Holy Spirit. But he was exhausted. Because we are human beings. And we need to be filled with his glory. We need to be transformed and, and filled with his glory. Just like, you know, it says Moses was on the mountain. When he first came up on the mountain into the presence of God, God said to him, well, Moses asked to see his face. And he said, you cannot see my face. But you can see, he showed himself from the back. So he, he started to see his glory, his presence. I'm sure it was a powerful experience for Moses when he came up on the mountain. But after being on the mountain for 40 days, he did not even know himself that he was shining. He wasn't aware of it. But when he came down, the people around him, they saw it. It was so powerful that they couldn't even look at him. On Danjuma, it was so powerful that they all had to look at him. <laughs> it was amazing. It was attractive. God is love and purity. And it is attractive. It's, only, it's not attractive for people that want to continue in sin because it, it, it reveals sin. It reveals impurity. So when, you, when people meet the presence and the glory of God they either have to repent or they have to run <laughs> to get out of it and we have to tell them sometimes what is this what's happening how can I get it you know when Jesus when Jesus left the earth. Matthew 28, he's giving the great commandment. Go out into the whole world and make disciples. What was the resources he gave, he left the disciples with? Good vehicles and computers and some... <laughs> No, not there was the only resources that was there was people and the word of God and the Holy Spirit. That was the resources. And and above all, the resources was the combination of those three. It was people filled with his word and filled with the presence of the Holy Spirit. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Actually, he did, it's very interesting in the Bible, you don't find any systematic theology. <laughs> That's quite interesting. Well, some people say there's a bit of it in Romans, maybe, at least a little bit. But there's a lot of theology in the Bible, absolutely. But we as me, people, we, we have a tendency, we want to make system out of everything. We want to understand it. We want to put God into our little brain. That's not possible. Oh, please, please shut up. Well, that was my phone. <laughs> it wasn't him. <laughs> I talked to my phone, sorry. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. So God, God is about to reveal his greatness. We will be in awe. We will be in awe. And we are the body of Christ on earth. It's you and I. We are the ones that he have decided to reveal himself through. Hallelujah. Like our friend said in the afternoon, he believes in us. He believes in what he has put in us. The thing that without him, we are nothing. God made you a new creation. You know what is the greatest thing with a new creation, of being a new creation? The greatest thing is that we can connect with the Father. We we can, cannot contain all the power and all the glory. But the new creation can connect with him. Hallelujah. And we can carry with us some of his glory and power and all of those things. And we are the hope of this world. We are. Oh, we read this afternoon from Second Corinthians seven twenty that we are ambassadors. We are ambassadors. We are representatives of a kingdom, and the ambassadors they need to have constant contact with their country of origin. I remember some years ago I I was we had meetings like evangelistic outreach in my hometown preaching on the street every day and we had a lot of people that came to Jesus and the meetings was like from 7 in the evening or maybe 8 in the evening to 9, 10 not too long meetings because they were out and then Friday night we decided to have a meeting all night meeting in the church beginning 10 o'clock in the evening and I was there and I was preaching and while I was preaching the Holy Spirit descended in a way that I have never felt before. I'm, I'm so blessed that I have actually felt it afterwards again. <laughs> and I need it over and over again. But he first, first my body started shaking a little. Then my voice started shaking a little bit. I knew I had a message to deliver. I don't remember the message at all. <laughs> but I, I remember that God came. And then, as, the, as my body started to shake more and more, it became also hotter and hotter. 
and more and more heavy. And my body was so heavy. And it was like, you see, it was the glory of God that came into the room. And after a while, I couldn't stand on my feet. It wasn't, it wasn't like I was beaten to the floor. I was just so heavy. It was like my body was a thousand kilos. And I, I, I went down on my knees and, and I couldn't. I couldn't stand on my knees. I had to lie on, on the ground. And I'm sorry, that's, you know, the preacher is normally saying, switch off your phones. <laughs> and I thought I'd done that. <laughs> it was good, it was mine. Huh? <laughs> so I was standing there, and you know, I was, I was so stupid. Because the power of God came stronger and stronger and stronger. And I thought I will, it was like a fire. I thought it would consume me totally. And I said, stop, Lord. And immediately it stopped. And I said, Lord, no, 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 no. Sorry, I want more. I want more. I, I want, I want. But it, it was gone. If, if I didn't say that, maybe I would have, like Don Juma, you know, he didn't say stop. He was just thinking that, and God took him up in, into heaven. But, but anyway, I, after that encounter, I was walking around for many days, shaking with the power of God. It was, I was just shaking. I knew there was a new dimension in my life. And you know, God is here to change you. But I, I, I would say I've had many encounters like that. And most of them has been in my private, quiet time with the Lord. It's not that it, everything was happen in the meetings. But we want to preach and, and create faith in you because God will give you encounters. Amen. Over and over and over again. Because he wants his grace to be transforming you. Hallelujah. You know, I am just so grateful to God. Because he has done things with me that I could never, ever have done myself. It's just grace upon grace upon grace. And I, I know that he takes care of me. Hallelujah. And that's why I go sometimes to wherever God tells me, actually. And God wants... To transform us with his presence and his glory has anyone here been in a Catholic church some of you have been to a Catholic church uh, and there you probably saw pictures of saints how do you know they are saints because this halo around it why do you think that painted you know most of or at least in the beginning those saints were really powerful believers and they call them saints you know but we are all saints really but that's another thing but so they they why did they paint the saints with this thing around their head you know why because they actually had it they were actually carrying the presence of God in such a way that their face was shining. Some of them. Then, then there was like an inflation in this, this saint expression and whatever. And all kind of people were made saints. But, but, uh, but in the beginning, these were people that were carrying the presence of God in such a powerful way that it was visible. 
And you know, when we, when we are in the presence of God, like a weekend like this, or we regularly spend time in, in prayer, and we regularly go to meetings and together with other believers, there is a presence of God there that is actually changing us. And Moses didn't know that he was shining. You understand? But he was. And I can tell you that many of you, you don't know that you are shining, but you are. And you know, sometimes you, you meet people on the street and you just know that that's a believer. Because there is something of the presence of God over them that you recognize. But you are not, you are so used to it, so you might not be, it's just familiar to you, you know. But sometimes unbelievers will come and say, there's something strange with you, something different with you. What is that? You see, it's because you are a carrier of the glory of God. Hallelujah. You know, once we had, well, we had that many times, but, but we have stands on these um, exhibitions for like new age and alternative medicine and this thing. So we have the best alternative, so that's why we are at the alternative. <laughs> so, I, so one, one of these times I was walking around there looking at all those crazy things that were there and this lady come up to me and she says do you know that you have a big aura yes of course I know <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> it's the glory of God it's the presence of God and we some of these new age people they they are spiritual sensitive. It's just that they are also confused. <laughs> yeah. But we have something that is so much more powerful that they can, I almost said that they can never get, but they can get it, of course. <laughs> but they, more than they can get through their schemes. <laughs> yeah. And we are called to, to carry the presence of God. Hallelujah. I want to I want us to look at the um, Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Matthew 17. Matthew 17. Here it says, oh, I better get to my, no, it doesn't really work here. Okay. Sorry, I have my Bible on my iPad and it wasn't there was a, an updating. So he says Matthew seventeen, after six days Jesus take Peter, James, and John and his brother and bring them up on a high mountain alone and was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun and his raiment was as white as the light. 
Some places it says that this was a story about the transfiguration or about the revealing of the glory of, of Jesus. So there was something was over Jesus that made his face shine. You know, we were talking about how the supernatural can can uh, well reveal the sin in the lives of people or or their need of repentance but you know if you if it is only about like healings and answers to prayer and God wants all of that he wants to bless us and he wants to demonstrate his power and, and that is revelations of who he is, his goodness. But you know, there are, I've been to some of these new age people and they, they have some kind of power too. Nothing like the power of God, of course. But there is no one that can carry the glory and the presence of God as the believers can. Such a purity, such a love, such a power that no, nothing on this earth can challenge. Hallelujah. And God is calling us to walk in that same presence. Jesus says, Jesus' face was shining. Because of the glory of God that was upon him. Let's go to Matthew 20, 27. I better put away this because it's Norwegian Bible that confuses me. <laughs> Matthew 27. Here is... I think we are in uh, verse 50. F verse 50. This is about the, the crucifixion, the death of Jesus. And it says in verse 60, Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost and behold the veil in the temple was rent in two from the top to the bottom and the earth did quake and the rocks rent so what was the immediate result of the death and resurrection of Jesus or death of Jesus it was the veil in the temple was rent and and suddenly there was access to the glory of God. Hallelujah. And suddenly we as human beings, without being a, a, a fear of death, without being afraid of being consumed by fire, we could go in to the presence of God. You know, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. I remember in the 70s, well, I wasn't too, too old in the 70s, but I, I've, uh, 70s a little bit in the 80s, um, there was this Jesus movement, this Jesus revolution and Jesus people and whatever, flower power, the Christian flower power. <laughs> and they were saying, Jesus is the answer, Jesus is the way. But the thing is that when Jesus is the way, he's the way somewhere. He's not a destination. Well, the thing is that when you have Jesus as your destination, you also end up the other place that he is the way to. He is the way to the Father. He is the way into the glory, to the presence, the living presence of God. 
He is our admission to the holiest of holies. It's amazing. So God, I said that God's resources for the end times, for bringing the kingdom of God to the ends of the world, we are the resources, you and I. And He will fill us with His glory. Don Juma, he was, has been used to bring the kingdom in many places, actually. But he was exhausted. But God wanted to fill us over and over again. Hallelujah. And uh, if you go to Romans chapter 8, you see the same thing. You see, uh, Romans 8 starts with, there is therefore no, now no condemnation to those which are in Christ Jesus. So that, that is like the foundation of our boldness. We are washed in the blood of Jesus. We have, we have received his righteousness. But what many people do not fully understand if we go a little bit further down in Romans 8. It says, from verse 29, For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed or transformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren, you, you understand, he is, he is not first of all uh, building mission strategies. Well, I believe it is right to have mission strategies. Absolutely. We need that. We need to get that from heaven. We need God to speak to us. But the most important thing is that he creates missionaries. Or l let us say sons and daughters that carry his image. So that's why it says we should be transformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. You know, we read in John 3.16 that he's the only begotten. He came as the only begotten. And he's becoming the firstborn. Because he's raising up a people, or, or sons and daughters of God that are like him. And he becomes the firstborn son. And, and I will let us continue here. He says in verse 30, Moreover, whom he did predestine, them he also called. And whom he called them he also justified hallelujah amen justification by faith that is what gives us our boldness but you know what there's one more step here and it says those he justified them he also glorified hallelujah you know we read in Matthew 17 about what happened when Jesus was glorified. You understand? He, the glory started to shine from his face. And we have most born again believers today, they have learned to go walk around with the, with the consciousness of being righteous. I know I'm righteous. I know by the blood of Jesus, I am righteous. I'm washed by his blood. I don't fear demons or I don't fear hell or death I, because I'm righteous. And it took me some time even to end up with the assurance of salvation. I didn't come from a Christian family. So it took time for me to to, to end up there. 
But slowly, slowly, that became a part of who I am. And you know what? In the same way, we will conquer living in His glory. Hallelujah! We will live in the glory of God. Those He justified, He also glorified. And we, as missionaries, as sons and daughters, as, as uh, uh, teacher, pastors, evangelists, prophets and apostles, or whatever, we are first of all sons and daughters that carry the presence of God. And we need to be touched by Him over and over again. And he will, he's more than willing to touch you, to transform you. And Moses didn't know. He had the most powerful encounter with God. He was with him on the mountain for 40 days. And he didn't know that he was shining. And some of you, you are not aware of what you are carrying. You see, you carry the tangible presence of God. And I must say, when I had that encounter, as I said, I on the floor, and the first days I was shaking with his glory, and then little by little, you know, it just, oops. A week later, I said, or actually, actually, I remember there were several weeks that I had an other, more tangible presence. But the two first days was just awesome. But after a month, I was, what happened? It's just, it's just me again. But you know what? I actually was changed. Some of the most heavy presence was gone. But I have been changed. But I have already got new, got used to my, the new me. Hallelujah. And that's what's happening with you. So people around you don't, don't the people around you notice, even if you don't notice. But the more you are in the presence of the Father, the more you are changed. To become like him, the more you give his presence to other people, and the more weight your words have. Actually, what is giving your words weight and authority is not so much what you say, but who you are. What you carry with you. And people start noticing that you have been with the Father. You have been with Him. There is something different with you. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Father. So Moses was shining because he had been with the Father on the mountain. In Romans 8, no, no, I'm not supposed to be in Romans 8. I'm supposed to be in 2 Corinthians. My Bible doesn't really, it's not very willing. <laughs> okay. I'll use my Norwegian and I'll translate again. Or maybe someone have an English Bible too. Yeah, if you can go to verse 17 and 18. Three, three, seventeen and 18. Chapter 3. Now the Lord is the Spirit. When the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And next verse. But we all, with open face, beholding as in the glass, or in a mirror, actually it says, 
the glory of the Lord who are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as seen by the Spirit of the Lord so when we see him when we spend time with him when we seek him we are being changed from glory to glory and we are carrying what we preach we are giving to the people we preach to we become the message you see you you preach to people about how they come can become children of God that's a very f powerful message if you can demonstrate what it is to be a child of God but if it is just a nice theory sharing some theology but the thing is that you are carriers hallelujah so we are changing this world we become missionaries. Hallelujah. Have you heard about Saint... I'm talking about Catholics again. <laughs> Saint Antonius or Saint Macarius. Two of the early, early church fathers. They were not Catholics. It was long before the Catholic Church ever started, but the Catholics recognized them later. But Antonius, I think it was Antonius, he was a pastor and he was so hungry for God. And he spent more and more time alone seeking God. And, um, and the more he was seeking God, the more the presence of God came upon him. And people were knocking on his door to to talk to him and to have contact with him, just like Don Juma, everyone wanted to be with him. So he decided, let me move to the outskirts of the city to be, so I can be alone. But the problem was people quickly understood where he was, so they came to him thousands, thousands. And they wanted what he had. And people came to him and he told them about how to get it about repentance about forgiveness and about sin and purity and being in his presence and people followed him so there were so many people so he moved into the desert into the wilderness far from the city and the problem was people followed him there also. Thousands of people came to be healed, to be touched by God in different ways, and just, just to be near him because he was shining with the glory of God. And you, I'm, I'm sure you have heard so, uh, some of this. He was the, became the, the leader of a movement because actually... He so much wanted the presence of God that out there in the wilderness, not to be disturbed by all the people that came, he made a pillar. And he, he stayed on the top of the pillar. So he could be alone and seek God. But thousands of people came in there. And when he had been there for many years, God told him, now you go into the city. I think that was Antioch in Syria. And he came into the city and an amazing revival started in the city. But he was carrier of the presence of God. And what we have to, to offer this dying world it's not a better theology than they have. It's not that we are, have so good sermons. It's a living God. The actual tangible presence of a living God. 
And of course, we need, I, I, yesterday I kind of, we're a little bit light on that. We need uh, strategies and we need to understand how we reach people the best. And your teaching this afternoon was, and many others, it has been really good. So about uh, healing and all of these different things. But first of all, God is calling us to be carriers of his kingdom. And when we carry his kingdom, then we need strategies and all of these things to find how do we meet with people. But I know that I have something that the people, the world is longing for. I remember one day, some years ago, many years ago, I was in a, it, it was in my hometown in Norway, and I was walking through town, and one guy stopped me. And he was looking down like this. I'm looking, just looking up a little bit. He was, and he said, well, I have something to show you, he said. He was really, really shy or really, what do you say? It's, it's a tract. It's about Jesus. <laughs> you know, he was ashamed of what he was doing. He couldn't look into my eyes. Or maybe he wasn't ashamed of what he was doing. Maybe he was ashamed of who he was. There are people that are ashamed of who they are. God loves you as you are, and he, he wants you to understand that you are a carrier of his glory. So this guy, he was actually trying to preach to me. I was a believer, so I, I just felt pity for him. I, I, I just felt that if anyone that gets a tract from him, they, that's like a vaccination against the gospel. You know, you saw that it was his bad conscience that pushed him out on the street. He, he thought he had to do it to be a good Christian. <laughs> God wants to come with him. His power, his presence, just transform you, fill you with his glory, make it totally natural for you to touch people, to see them heal. Hallelujah. It's not making you very good at healing. No, he's, I mean, he lives in us, so we, we do it on his behalf. But it's, his, it's him and his abilities. And it's so, if, if we are aware of the fact that we are carriers of his glory, of his presence, that when we come, the kingdom will come with us. <sighs> you know, the same Antonius, I think it was him, he said, if you have a garden and you want to grow a lot of good uh, vegetables or fruit in your garden, you do not leave room for weeds. You understand? You do not leave rooms for sin or evil in your life. If you want glory and holiness and power to fill your life. It's just a matter of what you want to leave room for. It's a matter of priorities. God has a plan for you. And the devil has also a lot of different plans for you. <laughs> and, yeah. I don't want, I don't want to leave room for, for, for evil to thrive. Because you are actually the most important part of the whole message. It's you. 
So that's why when it's also so nice, you see some of the preachers here that have been sharing, they, they don't excuse themselves for sharing, but they share with boldness. They, they are confident. They know that what they have is good. Hallelujah. We know that what we have is what the world is longing for. We know that we have the solution to the sufferings of this world. And when I have tasted a little bit of it, I say, Lord, I want more. Like Dan Juma, he loved what he was doing, but he was also exhausted. And you know, some of us have been serving God for years and years. Some of us had strong meetings with, with God some years ago when he made a decision in our life to serve him forever. But we are tired. But God loves you more than he loves your ministry. You understand? He loves you. He wants to fill you so much with his glory and his presence. That's why he wants sin and evil out of your life. So that you can be filled with the life, with life itself. John, John 10 John 10, you know, it says, and you know, this is, this, what you read here, this is what we are carrying. John 10 says, the thief comes just to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that you will have life and life in abundance, or abundance of life. We are carrying this to the world around us. In John 1, it says, the, verse 14, the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we saw his glory, the glory that the only begotten Son has from his Father, full of grace and truth. Hallelujah. There's a time now when darkness is growing in a way that God would demonstrate His glory in a way that never happened before. Demonstrate his glory, his grace. But the thing is that many churches have been starting preaching about the grace of God and the love of God because there have been so much legalism. At least some people say so. <laughs> I've never been to a church where there has really been legalism. I mean, maybe some attitudes, but not where it has been preached. You know, the, the big problem of this time is not legalism, it's lawlessness. But when God comes with his grace, he comes with grace and truth. That's the answer to the lawlessness and the answer to legalism. Grace and truth. I remember we came one place in a place in Niger we had about 25 new believers among the Fulani tribe many of you know the Fulanis and um, actually we had we had almost about 40 of them 
But we expected about 25 of them to come to our meeting. We took our big meeting tent out in the, in the, in the bush, in the desert, or semi-desert. And, um, and we wanted to gather these 25, and maybe they, they would bring some other friends so we can do some disciplic training for them. Because they were new believers, all from ba Muslim background. And so we came there. To, to talk to them and disciple them. Decided to have five days together. On the way to that place, I was stopped by some people because I, I well, actually I stopped to ask them if they knew where the, we put up our tent. Because I wasn't there only when it was put up. And these people said, we will not tell you before you tell me us what you were doing that tent. So I started to share the gospel with them on the street there. And three blind people was healed. That's not too bad. <laughs> and the whole town became eager to, to, to hear more. And I said, sorry, you now have... They, they told me, you will, we will not tell you where the tent is before you tell us what to do there. And as I told them, now you know what we are going to do there. Now you must tell me. It was late in the evening. I went up there. We slept in the, in the tent. Next morning, 60 of the near, near, nearby people, the house of people from the area, they were waiting outside the tent. And I said, and I came out. They said, we, you must pray for us. We are sick. And I said, wait a little. I'm going to the toilet. I'm, it's just in the morning. I, no, they say, no, you don't go anywhere. Not before you have healed us. I, I say, I just want to go to the toilet. No, they say, they surrounded me. They stopped me. <laughs> and that was when I, I had to do it so quickly, you know. I just said, Jesus, 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 Jesus. I've touched everyone and I run into the bush. Into the bu bushes. <laughs> and I did whatever I needed to do there. And I came back, and they were all healed. <laughs> I said, Lord, what is this? <laughs> it, it was, when that happened, these people, they were so full of faith and expectation. It came like, like a cloud came over that place. And over the next three days, actually, it was so hot there, we only lasted for three days. Uh, three nights, then, uh, yeah. What was it for? Well, so on the next three days, these 60 people, they run back to their villages. And by noon, there was about 300 people there, all sick. And when we have healed them, they run back to more villages. And in the evening, there were 700 people there. And they were all healed. And it was like a collective understanding that these people, God came with these people, everything is possible here. I, it was so hot there. I was totally exhausted after the first day. But I lasted three days anyway, just by willpower. <laughs> but I was totally exhausted. But the glory of God felt, touched this. And, and there was like, I don't know how many. There were hundreds of people coming to us all the time. I, I mean, I, all my preaching that I prepared, I had to put them away. There was no time to do discipleship. It was only about praying for people quickly like this. Sometimes some people we prayed for longer, but everyone knew the power in the name of Jesus. And five villages, five Muslim house of villages, the, the chiefs came and said, can you teach us how to become Christian? We want our towns be, to be Christians for now. But we really came there for the Fulanis. <laughs> what, what, how, why do I talk about this? You know, the glory of God is available for us. 
And if we want a supernatural and we want real repentance in people, not only them coming after the blessings, we must carry his glory, his presence. And we can only do it through repentance and spending time with him. Of course, to spend time with him and come close to him, we must repent. Amen. So what do we do? What do we do to get hold of, of this? What do we do to, to walk in this? First of all, we need to just say, yes, Lord. I understand that this is available through the blood, of, through the death and resurrection of Jesus. When Jesus died, he opened the way. He made us righteous, and our righteousness gives us access to the, to the glory of God, to the presence of God. And we need, need to go there, into his presence, just to be transformed and filled with glory and power. You know, the glory of God is more than supernatural power. It's holiness, purity, love, and all good things. Apostle Lawan, what do we do now? You pray for people? Will you come with me? Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you for your patience. I know that God is doing something that's very strange. Uh, to sit down in England for this long, you must have a determination. If you are not looking for something, you will have gone home. So, thank God for all the ministers who have been ministering. Um, you will notice that I have not preached since yesterday. And uh, the plan is deliberate because uh, please forgive me, I'm getting older and I want people I have ministered to to preach because when I'm gone and Jesus has not come they will be here. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Nevertheless, I have not forgotten of the wisdom that is necessary for others to maybe garner from some experience that we have had. And these men have been talking. It's like I myself came for retreat. Amen. Because if you are not humble, you can't learn. You can't learn anything. As they are talking, I just was hit by one revelation or the other. And I picked my pen and write because the light in this room is bright. Amen? The light over your ministry is bright. That's why you are hearing so much. To some of you, it may look too stressful, but there is so much light here. And I'm not joking. What Teja is saying is true. When I was younger, 
I used to be a lecturer in our ministry's Bible college. And I would travel 120 kilometers to go to teach in the Bible college. And I was so passionate about it because there are students from 32 nations from Africa. I didn't know at that time that I carried so much glory. I was totally ignorant. Let me be honest. With the revelation that is coming at this end time, none of us, all of us who have a privilege to listen or to see or be here, you should never remain the same. I didn't, didn't, I didn't hear you excited, amen. Because at that time, I was totally, completely ignorant. I didn't know about glory. I didn't know about anointing. I didn't know about nothing. I just preached the gospel. But I fasted a lot. I did what? I fasted a lot. Because I was going to meet people probably I will never meet again. So during that year of, uh, of training and teaching, this was about 1984, so I will fast, I will fast, I will fast. And then I will go to this uh, college and then minister to them for the whole day. I was teaching the life of Christ. I wasn't teaching about miracles. I was just teaching about the life of Christ. But like I told you, I never knew I carried so much glory on me at that time. I was ignorant, totally blind. But... I didn't know until many years after, in the 90s, maybe about 15 years later, I traveled to some of those countries where I had taught students. And I met some of the students. And everywhere I went, they were, they were now, you know, well-known ministers in their nations. And they would come out and say, what, what? What, always, what is it that always come with you to class? I said, what? Come with me to class? They said, yes. Some things always come with you to class. Because any time you particularly, you are coming, all of us must fast on our own. You didn't ask us to fast, but we fasted. Because we don't know what you will see and say about us. And we didn't want to look like we were dirty. I don't know whether you understand what I'm talking about. And so it was like that. And I didn't recognize at that time that a person could carry glory. But as I grew in the Lord, the Lord began to open my eyes to actually see into the realm of the spirit what we believers are my passion to come to England to come and share about missions is not because I'm looking for somewhere to preach and it's not because I'm looking for a name somewhere no, that's not the issue the issue is that our fathers from this land brought the gospel let's be honest they came, died in my home state, we have burial ground for missionaries who came from America, who came from England, and they died and they were buried in Nigeria. We know what they sacrificed to come to us. Now, somehow, we are here from different nations and different countries. And listen, is the turn of Africa to bring the gospel in a mightier manner to the ends of the earth. I'm not joking. I'm not just casually talking. I know what I'm talking about. You may be here and you think you are here by accident. You are not here by accident. You may be here and one circumstance brought you to England. Forget it. All the preachers have been telling us today, yesterday, is that you are here for a purpose. Amen? 
and not only an ordinary purpose for a divine purpose are you with me sorry are you with me I know we have sat for a very long time but it's now time for us to pray and say Lord please use me amen it's a time now for activation we've heard a lot about healing about deliverance about encounters about this about this about that it's now for us as individuals if you really understand what you have been hearing there is time for activation but i'm only going to say one thing today maybe tomorrow god will help me uh, to be able to maybe minister the best way maybe god will allow me but for this evening i want to, to share something with you that i've been sharing of late that i believe is time for it please forgive me many years ago i didn't understand i just did it it's not that i read one book or i saw one vision or i saw one person or somebody taught me or i learned it from somewhere i didn't learn those things from nowhere but somehow god decided to use me in those dimensions i didn't understand one of them is this as I did quiet time every morning, please listen very carefully because we are sick, we are, we are shortly going to pray. Because there is something in us that God must activate. Amen? Because we are too believers. It's not that we should be going around proud, pompous, saying that we are the this, we are that. That's not the issue. The issue is that there is something God has given us that we must be compelled to share. Why is it that Satan is so much against us? Why is it there so much temptation? If we are not carrying something, he is jealous of. Satan is jealous of what we are carrying to the point that he attacks our children, attacks our families, attacks everybody. I don't know whether you read that. That's one of the major reasons we are under so much all this demonic whatever whatever but please i'm not going to preach this evening <laughs> but please just listen to me i was doing quiet time and i go to the place i think it's second kings chapter 13 where elijah elijah was about to be taken away i mean elijah was about to be taken away and the king came and he came, said, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel, I'm having a war. And these people are going to defeat me. I'm just paraphrasing. Are you with me? And then the prophet said, what's your problem? And then he told him what to do. You know, open the window, shoot arrows, and this and this and that. But what excited me was not those arrows those arrows have their meaning and they have their preaching they have their things like that but what mostly challenged me that morning as i knelt down and i read the bible was the fact that elisha was buried right elisha was buried and his body had decayed and one year later they were fighting a battle and then the, a soldier died. And they casually cast that soldier into the grave of Elisha. And the dead body rose. <laughs> Say, what? If the dead bones of a dead prophet can raise the dead, how, much, how about those of us who have been quickened from the dead? What do we carry? I don't know whether you understand. It was then I began to go to church and say, raise up your handkerchief. The power of God will come upon the handkerchief. Anybody you lay it upon will raise the dead. <laughs> Praise God. And it began to happen. I can't, I can't count how many mad people were healed, um, how many dead people were raised at that time. In fact, there was a Muslim village like uh, my yoga here has been sharing that we call the B village Bedon village where there's Leland in Ibadan. That was exactly what happened to the chief of that village who was a Muslim 
and then you know the gospel broke out there they still have a church there today as a memorial of the miracle of that chief being healed because there was a little girl that died there and then they took this handkerchief from the meeting we had and took it home and that child had been dead and then that child rose from the dead so what i'm saying is not about a person we're not talking about ourselves we're talking about the fact that as god opens your eyes to say hey so this is what I carry. So this is what I've been keeping all this while. Now, from that time, it occurred to me that when you have the Holy Spirit in you, eh, you carry... <laughs> Before uh, Tyron went away, I said, what you said, I said it was interesting. This uh, Dunamis name that we have here. I think the ministry Dunamis Bible Church, right? I said, Dunamis is like an app that you download with Google or you download with uh, any of these uh, that other, other platform and you download the app into your phone. As soon as that app is in your phone, it's independent. It will operate by itself. Right? Those of you who know computer, am I, am I lying? That app just works by itself. It's, it's an app, it will just work. And that's it. The Holy Spirit has been downloaded in us. It depends on what chance you give him. If you give him no room, that's left to you. If you give him no space, that's left to you. <laughs> but if you give him space, he will take over and do much more in our lives. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So all that this man of God has been saying since yesterday is just to enlighten us. We, many of us have had probably more than we are hearing now. But the problem is stepping out. Because the Bible says in, it's, it's time now to pray if you want to pray. I'm going to begin to, uh, to pray now. And any, uh, any of you that desire that God would do something in your life, I want you to step out. You leave your comfort zone and you step out here and pray. Maybe you kneel down or you, you, you sit on the platform or whatever you want to do. I know you are respectful, respectable people. Whatever you like to do, do something. Because the Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with what? And with power. Then the next word says, and he went about. If he did not go about, nothing will happen. He had to go about it to take action. It's either you see Jesus coming out of a house where he has just healed the sick, or he's going somewhere. I mean, when we talk about missions, it's about going and carrying this, you know, this power with us. And that's why TJ and um, you know, and the Kent are here because I, th I thank God for Kent is, <laughs> is a generation of missionary. So I'm going to ask you to please rise up from your feet on your feet. And if you like to come forward, you can come forward. If you like to stay back, you can stay back. We, I'm not calling you particularly now for a commitment. That will be later. But I want you to, to raise up your voice and say, Father, out of my belly shall flow rivers of living water. I want you to lay your hand on your stomach and say, out of my belly we flow rivers, rivers, rivers of living water. We are not sent here just to earn pound sterling. Pound sterling is very good. It solves a lot of problems in poor countries and poor families and anywhere we came from if we have pound sterling you can always uh, you know do some things but pound sterling must not rule over you money must not rule over the dollar must not rule over your life you want to rise up and say god what can you do in my life what can you do more yeah, what can you do more with me what can you do more with me what can you do more with my life from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet i want god to touch me to touch my life in the name that is above every name jesus of nazareth is alive in us he's alive today he's alive call upon him because he's both here and there he's both on earth he's in heaven 
it's, 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 it's a dual life. It's a dual life. He said, I'm in heaven and I'm on earth. And so I want you to rise up in your spirit. I want you to be challenged in your spirit. And say that I can do more by the grace of God. By the grace of God alone. I can do more. God can use me. God, you can use me. Something can happen in your life this night. This night. The power of God can break out in your life. And the power of God can be in your hands, in your leg, in your, in your members. Yes, O Shaka Ramozo Shapaka Pailakaya. And Rupa Poso Paka Tili Maropa. A Propa Poso Sombro Pipi Tumarakapa. Ramondo Sopa Kapa Tala. And Drapa Sonda Kap Deva Buddha. Don't, don't, don't pity yourself this night. Forget yourself. Forget yourself. Let the Holy Spirit take control of your life. You have to forget about yourself. Forget dignity now. Forget dignity now because there is a reason that God has sent you into the earth. There is a reason why God sent you to England. There is a reason why God sent you to the United Kingdom. There is a reason why God has sent you into this world. You know, break a posso tambra vika pala and drag it on the fossa tala baya. Ramosa shapata lekayan. Ramomba posso proke vanditaya and proke pato lemine habda verika. Yezosha pato name de veliga. A Ramondo sota cap de vebida. There is power in us there is power in your life there is power in your family there is power there's a reason you are born into the family in which you were born there's a reason you are born here there's a reason you are born in this nation there is a reason you became a citizen of the country and bracket on the social dakari and the higher yeah rumba poso tanga lady kamaya and bracket on the vessel take the maya romambo sota mandeka tene maya from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet let the weight of the glory of god begin to fall begin to fall let the glory of god begin to fall in this place let the glory of god begin to descend like a mighty like a mighty 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 wave in the name of jesus from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet if you are sick in your body you'll be healed in the midst of this prayer if you are sick in your, your is someone that has migraine on the right side of your head on the right side of your head it's a sudden pain that came in the night and you are battling how to get rid of this miraculous mysterious pain and the pain has to go now your blood vessels have to operate properly your blood vessels have to work properly from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet i speak to your blood vessels i speak to the marrow of your bones i speak to the marrow of your bones every genetic problem every genetic problem every dna problem every dna man of man, man, malformation every every sickle cell anemia every malformation of your blood system we come against those things right now and we command your blood to begin to behave normally we command your dna not to have spikes that cause problems in the name of jesus yes we are to carry this power to the ends of the earth we're to carry this power locally we are to carry this uh, this power to the community we are to carry this power everywhere we go in the name that is above every name reto dom brafato lem de vabida raketonda fasatali in the higher ask for the glory ask for the glory call 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 the bible says in romans call upon his name and rando sosha maniga rendo sopra catalita rabahaya and prato nama sosha balekaya and pretonda sosha manahaya and broke it under the babidi hallelujah you are going to break boundaries today break boundaries break boundaries break boundaries break boundaries uh, where you have not gone before in the realm of the spirit 
break the boundaries uh, break the boundaries break the boundaries uh, break the boundaries break the boundaries a ramba social and hallelujah don't let the devil limit you don't let your thoughts limit you allow jesus to express through your life allow jesus to express through your life and right on amaso sham de vapida a broken under the babida hallelujah i break him on the sata cam de babida Hallelujah. Him never read to Mosatala and brought another shatter come the Babude. I pray the man the Hallelujah. I will break the chains, every chain holding you down, everything holding you down, every power holding you down, every strength holding you down, every idea holding you down, every dream you have dreamed that keep you behind, every dream that you have dreamed that keep you low, that keep you wondering why am I in stuck. Stagnated. Why am I stagnated? Why am I stagnated? Why is it immigration has become your Lord? Why is it that the pan Stalin has become your Lord? A bratonam a post top or ekenanta, a broker panto tam leveliga. Hey, yato santa kaya. Yeah, yato shombo kemi namabude. Hallelujah. I am the vasusha. Heaven is opening over somebody right now. Heaven is opening over your life now, now, now. There's, there, there's, there's, there's a coming, a dew, a dew. There's coming a dew upon your head uh, like cold water. Like cold water is spawning on the center of your head, and some of you, your hands are beginning to vibrate. Your hands are beginning to vibrate. Your hands are beginning to vibrate. I brought a man to scapa like a I broke a bundle of Babu the Hallelujah because the charges of electricity are coming upon your life. I'm brand a sort of lacquer. You're in the post of Taleganda. Some of you are beginning to feel the heat in your legs. Some of you are beginning to feel the heat in your legs. I'm brand a mazo shanda babida. How beautiful are the legs of them that bring the good tidings of good things. So your legs are beginning to feel the heat. Your legs are beginning to feel the heat. Your legs are beginning to feel the heat of the Holy Ghost. I'm Bratonato Lika Nando Sotaraka. I brought on the Debe Susha Pada. There are tons of angels in this room. There are tons of angels in this room. You may not see them, but there are tons of angels right here. If you just say, Yes, Lord, I open up. I live my lifestyle that is so relaxed and so unserious. I, I yield myself to you in the church. I yield yield myself to you yet yeah, lord yeah, they, help me help me i yield totally things that have been withdrawing from you things that have you know keep me keeping to myself uh, and run no social public and, uh, things you cannot share with anybody because they're so precious to you and you are saying lord i release myself right now i release myself today i ran to sota cap the baby i broke a bundle of babu the hallelujah i bring no more so tanga the bahaya and Brenda Mezosh Ketala, some somebody now, somebody is touching your arm right now. There's an angel that is going around and touching hands right now, touching your right hand right now. Ranoso Shapta Babida, just raise up that right hand and say, Father, I yield my right hand to you, that on whosoever I lay my hands, they will recover. Raise up your right hand. There's somebody that God is touching your right hand right now. And if you raise it up, God will anoint that right hand. This is a time of impartation. It's a time of deliverance. A brona tole candelo sotakaya. A brato tana pasatala. A bropa pota taka lide hallelujah. Anybody you lay your hands upon will recover from sicknesses, from diseases. And if you are not afraid and the confidence of God is in your life, then you will raise the dead and you will not apologize for it. You will not apologize for the activity of the Holy Ghost because you are not a cause you are only a vessel you are only a vessel and so you don't have to apologize for the activity of the Holy Spirit Randa Sotakaba 
broke upon to that le be a tire. Let there be a breakthrough in your life. Let that hand be anointed. Let that hand be anointed. You are broke upon the force of the higher. Because through your hands, many shall be healed. And many shall be shall be helped. Many shall be saved. And broke apart on any kaya. That after this meeting, there will be an avalanche of miraculous healing through this church and through all that are attending from several countries I brought to down ketale be the hallelujah I broke it and the most attire I brand it all like in the higher he had a social telecom the baboody every 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 courage you need every boldness you need every boldness in your life let it begin to erupt right now the broke a thunder tolika the sota that you are no longer afraid you are no longer keeping down and shutting up and letting the devil oppress you all the arrows that are shot against you it's time to recover it's time to recover it's time to recover he had a son to cut a lady hallelujah hallelujah yes thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus more lord more 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 of your presence more of your presence in this place intensify your presence intensify your presence in this place in the name that is above every name it's time it's time brother it's time sister don't postpone your your miracle don't postpone your healing don't postpone even the progress in normal life don't postpone it to tomorrow tonight rather to the kaya Tonight, I pray to number post Kataya and brighten up to late here the higher. It's not late yet. Tonight is not late. And brighten not to shatter Kaya. God's intervention is your, your life. It's not late this day. And Ranta Sataka Brafata. A proper peke dandele babude. Ha, them devil sota candele babude. Hallelujah. Yezesho tanga paska leli. Hallelujah. Reke tonda fosso dagi and the higher. I broke a vandal be a toskataya. I brought the bandal of Babude, hallelujah. Yezosha pandal babide. I ran the social, hallelujah. Nothing is going to have, it's going to have dominion over your life. Nothing is going to have dominion over your life. Even we who are preachers, we cannot have dominion over your life. But help us of your faith. And try to sunder kata yata. Let there be fire right here. Let there be fire in this place. 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 In the name of Jesus, let there be fire in this place upon us right now. Break it on the first of the hallelujah. Yes, they shoot a minute and the higher. Ye get drum breath on that a kale be the hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Don't hold back. 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 Nothing evil will happen to you. Don't hold back. Surrender all. Surrender all. Surrender all. Unto Jesus. Surrender all. Not unto the pastor. Not unto the apostle. Not unto a church. Surrender all. You still be in this church, but surrender all. Surrender your life. 
Surrender to in the to the Lord. Whatever ministry or whatever nation you are from, surrender all and say, Lord, I surrender all to you. I just want to see Jesus coming out of my life. I want to see that light shining in my life. I want to see that glory radiating. Let the glory spread around me. Let the glory spread around my life. Reso shapaton de keria takaya. Rando socha to kamba pasalika radiga. O romondo sata kamda babu de hallelujah. And deso shaba do kemanda. Redo mosko talienda halabadika. I want you to take that hand that you raised up. I want to lay on your chest or lay on your head. Lay on your chest or lay on your, on your, on your head. Lay on your chest or lay on your head. I don't know if there's anybody here who is 100% well. Who is 100% well. There's nothing wrong with you from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. If you are such a person, praise the Lord. But for many people, they are either 98 percent or 90 percent well or 70 percent well or 50 percent well they still have to they are tied to one drug or they are tied to that medicine or they are tied to a consultant i mean there's nothing wrong in going to the hospital there's nothing wrong going to a medical doctor but i'm sure you want to go to the medical doctor regularly to check up that you are well that you are well, that you are well, that you are well. And so lay your hand upon yourself. And in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whatever sickness is on your body, whatever disease is upon your body, whatever genetic thing, whatever hereditary sickness uh, that you inherited from daddy or mommy or from grandfather or grandmother, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, be healed in the name of Jesus. Now be healed. Be healed, be healed, be healed, be healed, be healed. In your feet, be healed. In your womb, be healed. At your lower back, be healed. In your eyes, be healed. In your brain, be healed. In your bone, be healed. In your blood, be healed. In your tongue, be healed. In your throat, be healed. In your stomach, be healed. In your arm, be healed. In your teeth be healed in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus that migraine headache go in the name of Jesus that leukemia go in the name of Jesus that sclerosis go in the name of Jesus every jaundice go in the name of Jesus every periodic fever depart in the mighty name of Jesus every problem in your ears i command your ears to bust open in the name of jesus let your hearing be corrected right now let your hearing be corrected right now let your ears be opened in the name of jesus every problem that you've been having sinus problems yeah the presence of the lord is just here right now the angels of the lord are just touching people on their head right now uh, yeah 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 receive in the name of jesus Receive in the name of Jesus. 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 Any long term disease, any long term sickness, any generational affliction, every generational thing that can be dated to grand grandfather or grand grandmother, whatever it is that trouble you. And you are supposed to be free in spirit, soul, and body right now. We decree and speak to those conditions. Go in the name of Jesus. Go, 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 go now in the name of Jesus. Go in Jesus' name. Be made whole right now in the name of Jesus. Today, this day, this hour, everything that tied you down, tied your faith down, tied your life down, tied your future down, we break it in the name of Jesus. We break it in the name of Jesus. But loose in yourself, be loose in your life, be loose in your, in your places in the name of Jesus. The Bible says if the way of the of, if the way of a man please God, it said, even his enemies shall be at peace with him. As you leave this place, all those people you see as enemies, they shall no longer be enemies. They shall no longer be enemies. They shall no longer be enemies. 
they shall be compelled to love you in the name of Jesus your delay in the place of work your promotion is guaranteed here in the name of Jesus the Lord God lift you up the Lord God lift you up the Lord God lift you up 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 wherever your records are be hidden your records shall be found 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 in the name of Jesus I said in the name of Jesus let the angels begin to hunt for your fire let the angels begin to hunt for your record let the angels begin to look for your record wherever it has been delayed let it come forth in the name of Jesus Hallelujah. The Lord said, Every place the enemy has rented a barrage of artillery against you and have hired weapons against you tonight, they are sunk in the name of Jesus. Tonight, they disappear against your life. The Lord will facilitate your ministry further. Where you have not had a breakthrough, breakthrough is coming now. Breakthrough is coming now. The Lord has given us equipping in this meeting. He's given us knowledge. He's given us wisdom. He's given us strategies. He's given us so, so many things. As you go to your ministry this time around, things are changing in the name of Jesus. Thank you, faithful Father. Blessed be your name, O God. 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 Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. I felt it's time to release us to go home for tonight. I don't, tomorrow we'll, we'll lay hands. But tonight is just enough for us to go home and pray and keep that which God has given us. Don't let it fall by the wayside. Don't let the fowls of the air come and pick it up. Don't let the weeds kill the substance. Let God seal what you have had in good ground. That in due season we will reap if we faint not. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. We thank the Lord for today. I believe you have been blessed and impacted. Amen. Okay. Um, before we go, the, these two books, you can get them for five pounds, both of them, written by Daddy Laon. And if you haven't got a copy of this, please pick one before you go. Tomorrow, we are here by 10.30. Amen. For the grand finale part of uh, as also as an outreach okay so please come prepared to receive and be blessed in jesus name okay so we're going to rise and say the grace now as we go may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit be with us now forevermore amen surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of Don't forget to pick those two books, okay? Bless you. Five pounds for both of them. Good night. <laughs>